Welcome to Math 8, Unit 5, Lesson 15, the volume of a cone. We asked the question today to start out, which has a larger volume? The cone and the cylinder have the same height and the radii. This might be a new word for you. Radii is the plural form of radius. Oops, help if I spelled that right. Plural form of radius. So when we talk about this, the radii we're talking about right here and right here. Those are the exact same. The heights are the same. So which figure has the large volume? And do you think the volume of the smaller one is more or less than half the volume of the large one? Explain your reasoning. As we look at this setup right here, what we have to recognize first off is maybe it would be helpful if you thought about, could that cone fit inside of that, that cylinder? It might be helpful to visualize that by recognizing or maybe if we just went like this, we can see pretty clearly that that cone actually does fit right inside of that cylinder. So the question is, which one has the larger volume? Well, if we slid that cone down inside of here, we would have all this space in here that's not that has nothing in it, so it's empty. We can clearly say that the cylinder has the greater volume. By understanding by understanding that, that value with it, the question then comes down to, is it more than one half or less than one half the volume of the large one explaining your reasoning? Well, when we look at this, how much does it actually fill up? What we should understand is that that cone, the volume of the smaller one, is less than half. The volume of... We should probably put cone here. The cone is less than half the volume of the cylinder. And the reasoning would be these values right here because it's rounded around these edges. It'd be hard to understand exactly how much, but we're actually going to see how much that will fit in there. And looks like I just bumped my phone and Siri's trying to talk to me. Sorry about that. Uh, so when we go ahead and we start learning with these lessons, what we should be considering now is just how much bigger is the liquid volume of a cone compared, or of a cylinder compared to a cone. And now as we look into the lesson, we're going to be able to do that. So take a minute here. This is just a, a minute. Why don't you pause the video and take a look and see, you know, how, how uh, to draw a cone. First thing is just to draw an oval, then put a point somewhere at the top, connect the lines, and you have a cone. So you can go ahead and take an opportunity to sketch a couple different size cones and uh, just label them. Make sure you label them with your radius and your height. Uh, again, remember the back side of this is dashed while the front side is solid figure. Oops, sorry, my point was right there, right there. And here's our height. And here's our radius. And there you go. So go ahead and practice that for a couple more and uh, see what you come up with. In the next segment here, oops, I, I pulled out the wrong stuff here. I should be going to this one. Okay. After you've practiced writing those, this is what we're going to do is we're going to be going from cylinders to cones. What we, <coughs> excuse me, what we need to know is that the cone is actually directly related to the cylinder in a very, very similar way. They're, they're actually extremely closely related. And when we talk about how closely related, our goal with this is to understand that the similarity between the two is pretty simple. So what we need to do is we actually need to talk about how much that cone relates to that cylinder like with the volume here. If we talk about the volume of this one right here, this cylinder being 90 centimeters square or 90 cubic centimeters, when we want to find the volume of that cone, we have this one simple understanding. A cone that has the same radius and the same height as another cylinder is actually one third Right? There's our, our value for the cone or for the cylinder. It's one third the volume of a cylinder. That's it. 
that's that's all there is to it. That's our next step with this. So if we know that the volume of a cylinder is equal to pi times the radius squared times the height, a cone having the same radius and the same height will be one third of that volume. So when we look at this as a volume with this piece, if we know that the volume of the cylinder is pi times the radius squared times h, and in this case, we know that that total volume was equal to 90 cubic centimeters. Then we can simply take that value and substitute it for a volume is equal to one third of 90. Because I know that that total volume is 90 and so the volume of the cone, when we say that, we could say volume of the cone is 30 cubic centimeters. There we go. All right, let's change it around just a little bit. It says, what if the volume is of a cone is 120 centimeters? See what they did there? They flipped that around to us and said the volume of a cone is 120 centimeters. So what's the volume of a cylinder? Well, the volume of a cone, if it's one-third the volume of the cylinder, then that means the cylinder should be three times the volume of the cone. So we should be looking at this piece and saying, well, if the total volume here is 120, Rather than multiplying by one third, I would multiply by three to make it three times larger to find out that the volume of the cylinder is three times the cone. So volume is equal to 360 cubic centimeters. All right? So if we pull this out and we talk about the express value here, we talk about the volume of a cylinder is given as V is equal to pi times the radius squared times H. What is the volume of a cone? Well, then when we talk about a cone, is going to be one third the total volume of the cylinder. Or we can say that the volume of a cone is one-third the volume of a cylinder that has an equal radius and height. That's the key thing. It has to have an equal radius and height in order to be one-third smaller for a cone or three times greater for a cylinder. All right, as we move on to this next section, calculating that cone or calculate that cone, what we're after with this is we're going to actually apply the formal definition of the volume of a cone. So now we know that the volume of a cone is one third the volume of a cylinder. And so here we have a cylinder and a cone, they have the same height and they have the same base area. So what is the volume of each figure? Well, I think it might be important to go ahead and label these right here We'll put four for the height, and then we need to know the radius. Well, I know that the diameter is 10. So if the diameter is 10, then the radius is half of that, so it must be five. So it might be helpful to go ahead and label those pieces. Now the volume for each figure, we would say that the cylinder, its volume, is going to be volume equals pi times the radius five to the second power times four for the height or 25 times four. So we know the volume is equal to 100 times pi. Keep in mind, express your answer in terms of pi means just leave it like this in terms of pi units cubed. And then when we look at the cone, we know that the cone, the volume is one third that total area of the uh, cone of the cylinder, so I should be able to just go like this, volume is equal to 100 divided by three, or 100 times one third would be 100 thirds pi units cubed. Or if you really wanted to, you could say 33 and one third pi units cubed, okay? On that next page, we say here is a cone uh, always know that if you get stuck on this stuff and you need a moment to process, please just hit that pause button and then review what's written here.
Next part, it says here's a cone. What is the area of the base of that cone? Remember that the area of the base of a cone is a circle. And so we know area of a circle is pi times the radius squared. And so we take that value of the area is equal to pi times 6 squared. So we know the area is 36 times pi because we're putting it in terms of, of pi. And it says, what is the volume of the cone? Well, the volume of the cone would then be volume is equal to pi ohms. One third pi times the radius squared times h. And so we can go ahead and substitute. So we know the volume is equal to one third of the area of the base would be 36 I drop pi in there times pi times the height of 8. Now it might be fairly simple to go ahead and just go one third of 36 and then times 8. I'll do this without a calculator. One third of 36 is 12 so that'd be 12 times pi times 8 and then I know 12 times 8 is 96 so the volume of the cone is 96 times pi units cubed. There we go. A little bit different when we have another cone here. It's a cone shaped like a popcorn cup, or a cone shaped popcorn cup. So that means that we're probably going to be flipping our cone upside down. And we have a radius right across here of five centimeters. We have a height of nine centimeters. How many cubic centimeters of popcorn can the cup hold? Use 3.14 as an approximation for pi. You know, that's an important sentence right there because that says we're going to actually be multiplying all the way through. So remember the volume for a cone is one third times pi times the radius squared times h. So one third the area of the base times the height. We can substitute and take one third of pi, which is 5, or pi, which, excuse me, radius, which is 25. Let's just go ahead and put these all in here. Pi times 5 squared times 9, and so we'll end up with the volume is equal to 1 third of 25 times 9 times pi. And I'm going to go ahead and use a calculator for that one. So we go 25 times 9 is equal to 225. And we're going to divide by 3 because dividing by 3 is the same thing as multiplying by 1 third. Dividing by 3 is 75. So we know that the volume of this cup is 75. Oh, I forgot one thing. 75 pi. So now our last step is to go ahead and multiply by 3.14 or approximately 235 and 5 tenths. What are the measurements? Centimeters, centimeters cubed. There we go. So when we do that, we multiply by the pi. I should take that symbol out of there. I'm going to, I'm going to refer to that as 3 and 14 hundredths. As it says, that changes this value to an approximation value and that changes this to approximately 75 times pi, which is more along the lines of 75 times 3 and 14 hundredths. There you go. If you're ready for more, go ahead and play with this one. It's a grain silo has a cone-shaped spout at the bottom um, in order to regulate the flow of the grain out of the silo. So the diameter of the silo is 8 feet. The grain of the cylindrical part of the silo, how many cubic feet of grain are held in the cone spout, how many in the in the, in the entire silo. So as we figure this one out, it's really important that you recognize that if the total height here is 16 feet, then the height of the cone right in here is 16 feet minus the 12 foot body. So we'd have an, a four foot height right here. And then we'd also recognize that the radius is four feet as well. So a little bit of information for you to go ahead and play with that one should you choose. The last thing we want to look at is the summary. And in this lesson summary, if a cone and a cylinder have the same base and the same height, 
then the volume of the code is one third the volume of the cylinder. This is the big idea for today. Make sure that we understand and recognize those pieces that uh, again, if the radius for both is R and the height and growth is H, then the volume of the cylinder is going to be pi times radius squared times the height. This means the volume of the cone is going to be one third the volume of a, of a cylinder that has the same radius and the same height. That's it for this lesson. Thanks for tuning in. Let me know how I can help. Have a great day.